Amen, amen, Sister Whitehead. We, we have to give God thanks for the things he has done in our lives. I, I, I wish you greetings and, and, and like to wish everyone a happy Sabbath. Um, it's, this is a special day that the Lord has made. And this is a time where we can step away from all the noise that we are, are, are inundated with in a week of, of what's going on in Washington and what's going on in, 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 in all around this world, all the d disasters that are going on. And, and we can focus on our creator. God is so good. You know, I want to start off my message by asking the question, first of all, how many today really believe in miracles? Do you really believe in miracles today in, in 2020? Why do I ask this? Well, we live in a world that's distorted by sin. Our concept of God is severely muted. Why does that matter? Well, the reality is, is that we cannot really appreciate the God that we serve. We sometimes get amnesia, just like the children of Israel, wondering who are we and who God is. We forget that we serve a God that can do the impossible. When I was putting together this message, what came to mind was a song by the Clark sisters. And the lyrics go like this. It says, I'm looking for a miracle. I expect the impossible. I feel the intangible. I see the invisible. See, see, what we have to do, we must reach a point in our life, just like Moses, that, that, that our hopes will become expectations. See, see, the, 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 we, we have to reach a point where the sky is the limit to what I can have. We have to just believe it. We have to receive it. God will perform it today. If we believe that, my question is, do you really believe in the promise? And if you are not sure about this thing, if you're not sure about this whole miracle thing that happens in your life for what we're dealing with today, I, I, I encourage you to listen intently to this message that I entitled, Despite All Odds. Despite All Odds. Please bow your head. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for just the privilege and the opportunity of coming together and, 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 and even although we're on, online, we may, may be in various locations. Some may be driving, some may be at home, some may be at, 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 their, at their office place. It, they may be uh, at anywhere. But the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter where they are, because we know that wherever you are, you, you could be with us, wherever we are. We, the highest mountains, the deepest sea, doesn't matter. We always are within reach of your goodness and your mercies. Lord, I pray that you uh, fill me with your Holy Spirit, be with me uh, as we go through this lesson today. And I pray that at the end of this message, somebody's heart will be lifted up when they recognize this powerful God that we serve. These things we ask your holy name, amen. Despite all odds. See, the one thing that we all have to, we all can appreciate with is that some things are given in this life. We all been there. We all been there. They see, I call it the three givens. See, see, we, we, we either are about to go through something, we just coming out of something, or we're in the midst of something right now. That's the reality that, that we live in. See, 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 many times in this life, we are engulfed with a myriad of trying circumstances. It could be finances. It could be relationships. It could be health. It, a plethora of things that are burdening us down. The one thing that we can count on in this life, whether you're Christian, whether you're non-Christian, is that hardships will come our way. That's just the reality that, that we live. So it's not a matter of if, the issue is when. See, the question is how do we maintain in spite of this situation? Now, I know <clears throat> some, of, some of our younger people can't relate to this, but this is something we have to reach a point in our lives where we stop the insanity. How can we do that? What is our recourse? Well, let's go to the Bible. That's where I always begin. And start off in Exodus chapter 14. And we start off in verse 1, which says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel to turn back and encamp in front of pi Herahoth, between Migdal and, and the sea in front of baal Siphon. You shall encamp facing it, by the sea. For Pharaoh will say to the people of Israel, they are wandering in the land, and in the wilderness has shut them in. 
and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all of his hosts, and Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And they did so. See, this is interesting. We, here's, let's, let's give a little, little perspective on this thing. You, we all know about the grand exodus. Moses, you know, was, was, you know, he instituted and the Lord used him as an instrument to get his people out of bondage. For years, they heard the cries of Israel and, and the Lord delivered them. They, were, they had left. Egypt and, and the borders, and they were traveling in, in a southwest, in a southeasterly direction. But, but the Lord says, no, nah, change your plans. Let's go here. And they had the people camp on the banks of the Red Sea. Now, this is interesting because <clears throat> when I first read this, it didn't, I didn't really catch it. But my question is, Belsafon, what exactly is significant about Belsafon? I did a little research, and I found out that this was an Egyptian city that worshiped the God of the north. This was the God that, 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 that was supposed to be over the sea, the, the, the storm God. So, so the fact that the Lord had them there was not an accident. The Lord wanted to demonstrate to them, I am the God of the sea. I am the God of the storm. There is nothing greater than me. But anyway, and Pharaoh will say to the people, Israel, they are wandering. See, see, Pharaoh thought they were lost. But see, they were following God's lead. And we have to understand that God is leading us in our lives even today. We cannot be dismayed. Verse 5 says, When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the mind of Pharaoh and his servants was changed toward the people. And they said, What is this that we have done, that we have let Israel go? So he made ready his chariots and his army. And he got 600 of his best men and, and his, his army, and they went out against the children of Israel. Now, verse 8 is, is something interesting. I read it earlier. It says, the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Now, many Christians had questions about that. What does it mean that the Lord hardens their heart? Does, does, that, you know, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. We were created as free moral agents. We are given the ability to make choices in life. What does it mean that the Lord hardened his heart? Well, when you do a little research and you, and you look into the Hebrew, and, 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 and the connotation of this thing, we have to understand that the, he, the, the Egyptians <clears throat> were given light. Remember, Moses came and first testified of the goodness and mercies of Jesus. And he came in the name of God, the God of heaven. And, and basically, he testified. He preached to them. Then after all of these ten plagues that encompassed their lands, they noticed that we are the only ones being affected by all of this. How is it that those slaves, the Hebrews, are, are totally unaffected? By all of it, the Lord was giving them light of who he is and, and, and what he's capable of. But they, but they refused to believe. They refused to acknowledge, because after each plague, they, they, they refused. Oh, this is just a natural event. It was just a coincidence. We don't acknowledge the God in heaven. And that is a lesson and a stark warning to us today, beloveds, that when we are exposed to light, but yet resist the power thereof, eventually, eventually, we continue to resist. We continue to do our own thing. We continue to go in the opposite direction. We continue to, to, to just to say, I don't believe this thing, or I don't have the time for it now. Eventually, we'll reach a point where our hearts will begin to heart. And you know, you think about the, the sore, <clears throat> when Jesus gave the parable of the sore, and he spread seeds all throughout. He spread seeds that some fell on thorny ground, some fell on, on, on harsh terrain, but others fell on fertile territory. Basically, the seed was all the same. It was the receptivity of the, of the condition of the land, of uh, 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 the ground that it fell on. The seed was all the same. The same thing with light. Light has, its pres has all of its properties about it, but yet some, some substances are, are, are melted, like wax. But yet other substances are hardened like clay. Light is still the same. What, is, what I'm saying is that when the Holy Spirit touches our hearts and, 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 and is working with us and, and trying to reveal to us the, the, the sovereignty of, of the God that we serve, the, the Jesus that came down and pointed us to Christ, when we resist, some hearts will be like wax and will melt away. Some, some hearts will be like clay and harden up, all depending on how we have predisposed ourselves. God gives us a choice, but eventually that choice, there comes conditions. And if we grieve the spirit, there will be no more light in us. This is what happened with these men 
of Egyptians. And the Lord hardened hearts, of, and they pursued the people. They went out, and they, uh, the Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and his horsemen. They went after them. See, see, after suffering devastating plagues sent by God, the Pharaoh of Egypt decided to let the Egyptian people go. God told Moses to get glory over Pharaoh and prove that the Lord is God. After the Hebrews left Egypt, the king changed his mind and was angry that he lost his source of slave labor. He summoned his 600 best chariots, all of other chariots in the land, and marched his massive army in pursuit. See, we have to understand that many times we may find our situations may change dramatically. We may be cruising along, everything's going well. Then all of a sudden we hit a pothole. We can't be dismayed by that because God is still in control. He's leading our lives. We should not fear that situation. Don't worry about it. Trust in the Lord. And so we saw that again, verse 10, when Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them. See, so many times, we, when we are encompassed with situations and, and scenarios in our lives and, and trials and tribulations, we become fearful. We forget the God that we serve. We can come to church on Sabbath. We'll get a bill on Monday. And then Wednesday, we're falling to pieces, stressed out, wondering, how am I going to pay this thing? We need to understand that the same God that delivered them can deliver us. Then Moses said, it is because they, 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 you know, they, they, they start to murmur, they start to complain. We have to avoid that as well. We can't get frustrated by circumstances. It is not that, that this way, they, they said that they, we brought us out of Egypt to die. They murmured, they complained. But verse 13 is, is, is key. And Moses said to the people, fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. See, see, Moses had already reached a point in his life where his hope was now expectations. He was expecting something great. He didn't know what was going to happen, but he had faith and trust in the God of heaven. And, and, and he said, for, for the Egyptian whom you see today, speaking boldly now, you shall never see again. And the Lord will fight for you. All you have to do is, is just be silent. So, so, so he, again, expectations. See, the Israelites seemed to be trapped. Mountains stood on one side, the Red Sea in front of them. When, when, when they saw Pharaoh's soldiers coming, they were terrified, grumbling against God and Moses. They said that they would rather be slaves again than die in the desert. There will be times in our lives that our adversaries will terrify us, but we must recall stories of God's liberation for our strength. When we feel trapped, by our circumstances. We need to pause, we need to exhale, and we need to reflect on God's goodness, goodness and mercies. Many times when we are inundated, we, we, get, we, we can't see an outcome. We, 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 we don't know what's going on. We start, we start to get stressed. We start to get insomnia. We can't sleep. We lose our appetite. We, 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 we just, we start, we, we pick up your Bible and read these stories of how God liberated. Remember, the same God is the same. He was the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So, so cry God, cry to God. So, verse 15 is, is, is tricky here because the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Now, I looked this up again in the Hebrew. This was not a, a, a cry or, 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 or a comment of, of divine rebuke on the children of Israel. What this was, was God already telling them, listen, I've already prepared a way. I've already worked some out. All I need you to do is in faith, move forward, step back, and watch me work. That's what this was all about. And he told Moses, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians. Remember now, they were predetermined. Now, and so that they shall go after them. Now, this is interesting. When you think of this miracle, if you, can you imagine? Just think about it in your minds. Can you imagine? witnessing something like this. Suppose you're on the sidelines and you're seeing water just completely just, just separated like that. I mean, that's an amazing thing. And, 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 and you start to see the people move forward that, in, in there. Now, I, not, not, not that I encourage anybody watching horror movies, but you notice how in, when you watch a horror movies, we're always the first to go. But at the same time, 
in these horror movies. Many times, we, we're always the ones to, who, who look, that, that, that don't look right. Some about that ain't right. We're the ones that are like, I'm not going in there. Where the other folk, they're like, well, what's there? What's in there? They'll go up in there, and then they, they meet their demise. But do you think that I would go up in there if I saw something of, of that magnitude, and they're walking in, this, in the midst of this miracle? There's no way I'm going up in there. Something about that ain't right. That, I, I've never seen anything like that. But, but because they were so fixated, it shows you the level of, of, of the hardness of their heart. They were so fixated on what they wanted. They were so focused and, and, and arrogant on, 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 and, 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 and egotistical. They figured it was totally no big deal. Just something that they, all they wanted was the people back. It didn't matter, and they followed him in there. And we see, and then the Lord Moses, uh, the, uh, Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord dove the sea back at, at, by a strong east wind all night and made the seabed dry, and the waters were divided, and the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea. We, this is an amazing, an amazing miracle. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them in the midst of the sea, and in the morning watched the Lord in the pillars of fire, and the clouds looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging the chariot wheels so that they dove heavily. And the Egyptians said, let us flee before Israel, for the Lord God fights for them against the Egyptians. And that's a little, bit, a little bit too late for that. You know, you know so many times we, we get in those situations where our recollection is a little slow. Here's the facts. The Hebrew nation roughly, was roughly around 2 million people. So this was no small miracle. The Red Sea was also wide where they crossed, about a half mile, adding to the amazing feat of God's miracle. The waters of the Red Sea were between three and 5,000 feet deep respectively to the north and south of the crossing. But interesting enough, where the Lord had them cross, there was a natural submerged land bridge. So when, the, when everything dried up, they were able to walk right through without having to go down to the abysses of the sea. See, God's miracle included pulling and holding back the waters through incredible power. The Red Sea waters became walls held back by the strength of God. Overnight, the ground was also dry. Yet, this was yet another natural miracle involved in the Hebrews' crossing. See, normally, naturally, the seabed would have taken weeks or months to dry out when exposed to nature's elements. Here's the thing. Our lack of faith may restrict us sometime from truly witnessing a miracle in our life. See, whenever again, we have to learn to stop, then step forward in faith and wait to see the Lord's deliverance. There's so many sub-stories to, the, to, to, this, to, to this miracle. See, Revelation 3 8 says, and I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, which no one is able to shut. I know that you have been, but a little power. See, see, a little power. Basically, we have power. It may be small, and for us, some of us, it's infinitesimal, but we have something in us. And yet, you have kept my word and not denied my name. So we see the deliverance was assured. See, verse 26, then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, and the waters may come back upon the Egyptians and their chariots and upon the horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and, and the sea returned to its normal course, completely abolishing and, and, and denihilating this army, the waters returned and, and it covered the chariots and, and the horsemen. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through, through the sea and the waters being a wall to them, oh, on the right hand and on the, on the left. See, see, sometimes in this life, e enemies will track us. The Egyptian army was in hot pursuit of their slaves. They wanted the Hebrews to return to Egypt to help rebuild their nation after, ter after 10 terrible plagues devastated them. They grew hard-hearted against God, acting foolishly by following the Hebrews through the waters. I wouldn't have done that. I'm going to tell you that right now. If I saw something like that, I'm standing there and watching from a distance. The Egyptians had already entered the Red Sea crossing, and, and by the time the Hebrews made it safely into the Arabian shore, they were really close to finally overtake, uh, overtaking these Hebrews, and they were ready to capture them and return to Egypt. But here's the thing. The moment came when every person, horse, chariot in the army, was fully embedded within the walls of the Red Sea. The Lord struck just before the break of dawn. He threw the Egyptians into utter confusion, leading to chaos in their camps. They were terrified. They had, they had an aha moment, but it was too late. They were all, their faith 
was already sealed. See, we got to reach a point in our lives where, 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 where all these things are, uh, life, life is going to happen. You heard the term, life is going to happen. Life is going to happen. You know, the, it, when, when you're behind on your, your, your mortgage, you're behind on, on, on your rent, you, you, you're behind on your car note, you, 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 you have bills. That are, that are stacking up the wazoo, and, 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 and you, 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 may get a, you may go to the doctor, you may get a, 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 a diagnosis that, that's not too, too good for you. You may be terrified by your circumstances. Whatever may happen to you, think about this. Look at the, what uh, this pen of inspiration has to say. She says that, will the Lord forget his people in this trying hour? Did he forget faithful Noah when judgment were visited upon the antediluvian world? Did he forget Lot? when the fire came down from heaven to consume the cities of the plain? Did he forget Joseph, surrounded by idolaters of Egypt? Did he forget Elijah, when the oath of Jezebel threatened him with the fate of the uh, prophets of Baal? Did he forget Jeremiah in the dark and dismal pit by his prison house? Did he forget the three uh, worthies in the fiery furnace, or Daniel amongst the lion's den? See, see, we have to understand that, that God loves us so much we can't allow circumstances to predispose who he is. God is still God. But look how she finishes up. Zion says, the Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven upon thee the palms of my hands. The Lord of hosts says, he that touches you touches the apple of my eye. God doesn't forget. See, 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 God will fight our fights. The Lord wrecked havoc on the Egyptians' armies by twisting the, their chariot wheels, and, and the horses could hardly pull the chariots, and, and the soldiers finally figured out that they were not fighting against man. Mm. They were going against something much more powerful. Unfortunately, like too many times us today, the Egyptian soldiers discovered too late that they were opposing God, and the Lord told Moses to wave his hands, and we all know what happened next. The soldiers who survived the crashing waves of the sea attempted to swim to shore, but they were unable to fight the hand of God. He didn't allow any survivors, actually sweeping the soldiers back into the sea. The Lord had made a proclamation. He says that I was going to take care of them, and there will be no record of them. I will do what I can, what, what I and capable of doing. Every individual soldier in the Egyptian army was killed. Now, not only was the Egyptian homeland ravaged, but their military forces were totally wiped out. The Egyptians didn't recover for a long time after that. In fact, the next pharaoh, <laughs> well, they wept bitterly because of this, because it took them a while to recover, because that one was taken out because of his arrogance. The Hebrew nation was no longer under the power of, or threat of Egypt because of God's Amazing miracles. I tell you, beloved, when you are cowering in your, in your room and, 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 and wondering what is going to happen next, where, wh how am I going to get deliverance out of this situation, whatever it may be, think about these, these texts. Psalms 50, 15, call upon me in a day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Think about 1 John 5, 14. Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Or think about Jeremiah 33, 3. Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. See, see, this thing starts off with, 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 with Hebrews eleven twenty nine. 29. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as though they were passing through dry ground. And the Egyptians, they were tempted it, and they were drowned. See, here's the thing. Do you really want miracles and see miracles in your life? There's, there's a prerequisite for that. See, 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 by faith. There, there's, there, is a, there is a particular key of unlocking the powers of heaven in our lives. See, now, 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 now look at this. God is a God of evidence. God leaves certain things. See, 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 this was interesting. This was a, a, an expedition that took place June 7th in 2012. God did it. Now science sees it. This was, a, in fact, this, this um, Hebrew teacher was who, who viewed the, uh, all the, the, the videos of this. He, what he said was, what they found strewn across the bottom of the Red Sea has shaken the religious and scientific community. 
Cameras mounted on remote control submarines reveal coal encrusted chariot parts, horse and human remains strewn like a battlefield wreckage on the bottom of the Red Sea. This Bible is not a book of cunningly devised fables. This is true. This is a, just a testimony of the great and grand work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God has done things, and, and that's why we have to use that book as a recourse to help us get through many of our trying circumstances. But this is the key to unlocking the powers of heaven. Do you want to see miracles in your life? Do you want to have a, a, a Red Sea crossing happen in your life? The, people, the Hebrew people were in awe of the moment. Finally, as a nation, they were beginning to trust both God and his servant Moses. The Hebrew uh, were now free. They were now a free nation. The miracles of the Hebrew crossing of the Red Sea was a great work of God for several purposes. Number one, and this applies to us today, it was a miracle for God to reveal his love and protection for his chosen na uh, nation of Israel. God wanted them out of slavery and living as a free nation. God will do the same for us today, beloved. It's not just reserved for them. Secondly, God was seeking the trust and belief in him as the God of glory. See, see, the Lord wanted the individuals within the nation of Israel to understand that he was God, a God who could provide for them, a God who would be with them forever if they trusted him by faith. The people did believe in God after watching the great miracles, although there would be future, future struggles. But the fact of the matter is, Many times God performs miracles, not only for our deliverance, but also as a testimony to those looking at us. See, when it, regardless of what situation we're in, somebody is always watching, and God loves to, to show off. He loves to demonstrate to others who he is. And finally, God was judging the godless and, 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 and faithless nation of Egypt. They had become arrogant and treated the enslaved Hebrews harshly. God, as he does with all national corruption, judged them. And all of the Exodus miracles had the common theme of breaking the back of the arrogant Pharaoh and the nation of Egypt. That mission was also perfectly accomplished by God's powerful uh, miracles. You know, I was having a discussion with my mother uh, last week, and we were talking about, you know, all the shenanigans that are going on in Washington. And one thing I was saying, I was telling her, we were talking about, is that God, the same God that judged nations then, is judging nations now. Don't think that he's not seeing what's going on. He knows more about what's going on behind the scenes than we do. He knows everything that they're doing, and they're being judged accordingly to their acts. Trust me, they're not getting away with it scot-free. They may be able to get away with it in man's eyes, but the God of heaven sees what's going on. The events of Moses and Exodus from Egypt were recorded so that you and I could hear about them. They're amazing stories of God's work amongst those whom he loves. The Bible is for our benefit. The authors weren't, written, weren't writing these books as God's word in order to make a living. They wrote them to grow our faith. God's word is a gift for us. See, this is, if you really want to release the power of heaven, if you really want to see miracles in your life, and, and, and regardless of what your, your, your situation or circumstances is, if you really want, want, want to tap into the power that, that, that we can't even relate to, this is where it starts. We must have an unadulterated faith. Hebrews 11:6 6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who seek him. And I'm going I'm to I'm touch on this a little bit more in a minute. God is there for us, but we must first believe. See, see, we must understand that God isn't asking for us to figure it out. He's asking that you trust him that he already has. See, see, this thing starts with, with it's a trust issue. That's where it begins. And, 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 and we, many times, are the reasons why we don't see miracles in our life. See, see, this is, is the biggest problem that we struggle with in this earth. See, education and learning have become idols to which people increasingly bow. We live in a time of exceeding pride in human knowledge and accomplishment, but God solemnly solicits our trust in him. To trust the Lord means more than believing in who he is and what he says. The word here, trust, can also mean to have confidence in. We have to reach a point where hope becomes expectation. Having confidence is something that means having an assurance that leads to action. That's the difference 
of the God that we serve. Trust in the Lord is a faith that lets uh, us boldly serve, that confidence should infuse our whole being. Moses had seen so many of, of God's miracles in his life. He had witnessed so much. So when he was able to go before Pharaoh and, and the Lord demonstrated his, his, his might and sovereignty, he had confidence no matter what situation I'm in. Mm. God is going to pull me through. See, in all our ways, we need to acknowledge him, and he will make straight our paths. Acknowledging God means knowing God wherever we are, whatever we're doing. This doesn't just mean intellectual assent, but an act of perceiving his character and will in every moment of his life. See, 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 acknowledging God is everything means that we remember that no circumstances come to us outside of the will of the Father. And I used to tell him, I remember I had a conversation, and I'm going to explain this story in a minute uh, with my sister-in-law. I was saying that nothing catches God by surprise. Why? Because the devil has to sign off first before he sends that trial your way. Knowing that this will give us strength even through difficulties and pains and fears because we know that God will never leave our side. We have to understand that before, before anything happens to us, the Lord signs off on it. The devil comes and says, Lord, I want, I, want him to, I want this hardship. I want that hardship. I want to put him through this, put him through that. But we need to understand that, that anything that happens in our life, God is aware of it. But we have to take it to him if we want a resolution. And then putting our trust and wisdom in man, looking at ourselves, both individually and corporately, is futile and extreme. See, for the wisdom in this world is foolishness. That's what God says. The cure for us being enamored by our own knowledge is in understanding how sublime and fearsome our God is. The fear of the Lord not only makes us loving kindness, that, 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 that much more incredible, but also motivates us to avoid evil in all of its forms. We have to understand that, that we are the reason many times why miracles aren't performed in our life. And then finally, the, the, the perfect trust of, uh, 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 of Jesus Christ in a culture of misplaced trust, Broken promises, damaged lives. Only Jesus is unshakable, unchangeable, unbreakable, the worthy of our trust. Only he trusted the Father perfectly with all of his heart, making straight to the path for our salvation so we too would trust in him. You know, last night I was listening to a sermon by uh, Pastor Pearson, and, and he talked about how the, the Lord has left us all with, you know, with little remote controls for, for power. See, see, when Jesus came to this earth, he set down all of his divinity and became a man, as we are. But, he, but at the same time, he had the source. He knew he trusted in his Father explicitly. He's given us the same avenue of, 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 of ta tackling that power. It's trusting him, trusting in the Father. Do we believe? Do we trust? That's the key. For, for, for salvation. Now, as I close my message, I asked a question at the very beginning. Do you really believe in miracles? You know, I have witnessed miracles in my life. And, 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 and as I start, and I started writing this sermon, I, I started to reflect on some of the grand miracles in this life. And, I, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about these particular miracles because there's no, there's no resolve. There's nothing that man can do to get you out of the situation. After the, first, the first story that I want to tell you had to do with my mother-in-law, Yvonne Clayton. You know, when we were still living in Ohio, she had, a, she had to have a surgical procedure. And I think it was on her, on her knee or her leg or somewhere. And, then, and, and, and there were some complications that, that resulted from that. She ended up getting a blood clot. And, and eventually the clot went up and, and got into her heart. And, and I remember we got a call and, 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 and from her sister saying that, 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 that we have to come up there because they need to do something quick. She, she, she's in dire circumstances. They don't know what's, what to do. So we got in the car. We drove up from Ohio. And we went down to Detroit. And, and, and when I got there, Interesting enough, um, Pastor, Pastor Gabriel and Pastor Liverpool were already there. And the family, and I remember we went into the ICU, and we surrounded her bed, we, 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 we held hands, and, and we prayed. And I remember standing there. You know, I spent 10 years in surgery, and, and I, I was familiar with this whole dynamic. And, and I was standing next to the machine, and I was looking at that big clot flopping back and forth in her heart. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, this is only by the grace of God she's going to get out of this thing. And we prayed. And I remember they asked her, do you believe? 
that God can deliver you? And she said yes, and they anointed her. And we, and we prayed. We left after that, and, and, and I, I, I didn't feel very confident about the situation. We, were dry, we drove home, but I remember around 4 o'clock that night, or the morning, I should say, we got a phone call. That, 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 that what they gave her, that the medicine they gave her worked. She, there's, there's no clot. It's gone. Just like that. Nothing but a miracle. That was a miracle. And I thought to myself, to God be the glory. Great things he has done. We have seen amazing things. In fact, one of the ICU nurses uh, was telling uh, one of our relatives, she was saying, you know, I, I, we, we were watching all of this. And we were watching from a distance how they, you're praying. And, and in our minds, you were saying goodbye. <laughs> but they didn't realize that we were praying to a God that says, oh, no, not yet. We, I, I still got something for her. This is not my time. This is an opportunity for me to show them that it's not what you do, but it's what I allow. And I have all power. And then I, I thought about that. And then there's an, another story that happened with her granddaughter, our, our, my wife's niece, uh, Uni, who used to attend this church. And, and I remember it's a similar situation. She had heart surgery in the spring, and then she ended up having to have uh, complications from that. And, 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 and same thing, a similar situation, where she had to have heart surgery again, eight, nine months later, high-risk surgery. That's not something you just do. Normally, the, the, the greater outcomes take time. This girl just went under the knife. And they said, we have to do this again. So they called the family together up at U of M, and we were all together, and the surgeon went through what he was going to do for the, to the family. And, tell, you know, and, 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 and you know, I, like I said, I had been involved in these surgeries, and I didn't see very good outcomes. So I, I went outside, and after, after he talked with the family, and I pulled him aside, and I said, hey, you know, we talked a little bit, and I told him a little bit about some of the stuff that I had done, and, and we would just talk, talk, talk. And I said, look, I want your honest opinion. What do you really think about this thing? And he looked at me and he said, you know, you know as well as I do, if I don't do anything, we know what the outcome would be. So I have to at least do something. I say, I, I, I truly understand. But his prognosis was very poor. He wasn't expecting very much, but he couldn't sit there and just allow her to follow his course. So he went in there. And I think that, that, that Monday, we, we, you know, that, and, and, and wait a minute, not before, before that great miracle, but I remember as I left there, I was, I was really kind of forlorn. I didn't say anything to my wife. I didn't say anything to them. I, I, I didn't think it was, it was going to be a good outcome. And, and, and so I was just sitting there thinking, well, what am I going to say? And then the Holy Spirit said, Mark, did you not just witness a, a miracle already with her grandmother? I'm the same God. So I said, okay. So I, I called Pastor Patterson at that time, and, and, and I said, can we get the elders together to go to the hospital and, and pray over her? And, and, and where, where, where the elders and, and the pastor, where they come together, they say, you pray, the, the, the saints can pray. I'm locking that power. So we did that. We went up to the hospital and we, on a Saturday afternoon, and, and, and we prayed over her. Pastor Patterson asked her the same question. Do you believe that God is capable of healing you? And she said yes, and she did it, and 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 and, and, and we left, and then we went through that. The, the her, she had that procedure that, that Monday. And in fact, it went so well that 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 the surgeon was 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 almost aghast. He was shocked how well that thing went. There was no complications. It just went boom, 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 boom. He didn't know what this. He was so surprised. He knew it wasn't him. Something was a miss, but the outcome was sure. See, we serve a God. And my last story I wanted to say was regarding my mom. I remember she called me early Sunday morning. She said, Mark, um, I, I need you to come over here. I think I fell, or I fell and I hurt myself. And I said, okay, I, I'm about to get over there. I'm not thinking it was that big a deal. Get there and, I, and, I, and go in there and I find, find her laying on her bed. And now, I said, well, you're laying on your bed by the phone. I said, well, hey, let's, let's turn you over, because I called the paramedics. They're on the way. And, 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 and as soon as we t I touched her, she just shrieked out in the pain. Couldn't even move. And I'm sitting there scratching my head. I'm like, wait a minute. You fell in the hallway. And, and, and you, you were able to, 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 you know, to move yourself into, into your bedroom. But how'd you get on the bed? She said, I don't know. 
I was like, what do you mean you don't know? You just popped, you just so happened to be up here by the phone. How'd you do that? To this day, she can't tell you how she got there. But we know that God performs miracles. See, we have to remember Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your path. We have to understand that too many times we try to figure things out. God will always, and I can tell you, it's going to happen in your time. If you resist him enough, he's going to reach a point where all your circumstances will, will, will extinguish all your resources, and you have no way to turn. But God, Psalms 28, 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exalts, and my song I give thanks to him. And then finally, Ephesians 3, 20, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. See, we go through this life, and, 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 and sometimes we, we, we are our own worst enemies. We have a God that has all power. The same God that delivered the children of Israel is the same God that will deliver you out of whatever situation you're dealing with. Despite all odds, God can make a way. Do you believe in miracles? Do you accept? You, we must reach a point in our lives where our hope becomes expectation. We can't allow the world to tell us out, our outcome because we serve a God that is in charge of outcomes. He told, he told Moses what was going to happen. He, you know, he didn't tell him how he was going to do it, but he told him that he was going to deliver him from his enemies. This is the same God that we serve. We have to believe. We don't see miracles in our life because we spend too much time trying to figure this stuff out. When we trust, when we submit, when we pause and we move forward in faith, doors will start to open. Miracles will start to manifest themselves. Even things that we didn't anticipate, as the stories I just told you, there's many more I can tell you. Uh, even my own personal situation, where, where God can intervene in our lives to prevent lives. He could, he, he could give you money for, that takes you out of critical circumstances. He can give you jobs. He, God can do whatever he wants to do. But we have to believe. And until we reach a point where we say, where we let go of, with our own mental inclinations and we lean on him for everything, that's when we start to see miracles happening in our lives. And, and, and now that's why I, I came to you this morning, just want to encourage us. We, we're inundated by, by, by the effects of COVID-19 and, 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 and people are going crazy, being stir crazy, being, because of the, 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 uh, uh, the, you know, being uh, separated and we're not in church, we're not able to come and worship him and we're not able to do the things that we were doing. And our whole routine has been changed. We, we're spending a lot of time on Zoom. And this is a tough time for us right now, but God is saying, Lean on me. I will pull you through whatever your situation is. It doesn't matter. I'm still in control. I, I, I knew about COVID before it happened, and, I, I, and I'm, I'm setting things up after COVID. This was an opportunity for the church to wake up and recognize the, the purpose that you are here for. We're not just here to come and fill up this building. Our ministry is out there. There are people suffering. There are people dying. That, that all be, even before COVID. They're struggling. They're going through mental anguish, and, and, and they're getting on vices because they're, they're trying to, 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 to wash away the pain. Only one that can wash away the pain is the one who washed away our sins, and it's Jesus Christ. We have to put our faith and our trust in him. That's, that's where it begins. And, and, and we can't lean on our own understanding because we don't, we don't have all the answers. Man is so mixed up. We, 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 you, you just look at what's going on in Washington. You know, people, you got he, one man's fixated going in one direction, talking about the election, and people dying every day. Record numbers. What, 6,000? They had 6,000 cases in Michigan just the other day? Per day. This thing is out of control. But yet, it's not out of God's control. What we need to do is get on our knees and pray and ask the Lord for, for, for divine intervention 
and resolution. Lord, step in and stop all this foolishness. We know that we're in the last days. We know that things are leading up to the, 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 you know, the, the hurt, the pangs, and, and we all know that according to prophecy, but the Lord says not yet. We still have time to get ourselves together, and this is a time for us to make our calling and election sure with him. We need to be about our own personal salvation, and also we need to be about going out and being a witness to someone else out there because there's a lot of people that are suffering right now. So I just want to come to you this morning and, and encourage you to recognize that, first of all, miracles do happen in 2020. Miracles do happen in this timeline. Miracles can happen if you but have faith in the miracle keeper. Just like, like, like uh, uh, Enos' song, God's a way maker. Miracles are real. Miracles are true. And miracles are assured, but you must have faith in order to allow the Lord to work miracles in your life. I pray that you uh, bow your heads with me. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for just the, the opportunity and the privilege to be able to come along and, and then lift people up. Let them know that, we, yes, this, this is a stressful time. This is a tough time. But, but in spite of all of this, you're still working miracles in our lives. The fact that we're still, we're not sick. The fact that we're still healthy, that's a miracle in and of itself. Numbers are, are, are high all over the place. People are getting this stuff all over the place, but we're not dying all over the place. Yes, yeah, some here, some there, but the fact of the matter is you're protecting us. Lord, we just pray for your divine protection. But more importantly, we pray that, that you will, will convict us and help us to, to establish a closer relationship with you, to use this opportunity to not only fortify ourselves with you, but also motivate us to go out beyond these walls and tell others that are struggling that you're soon to come. Lord, give us strength, give us power, give us, give us, help us to, re, to reflect your majesty in this world. Help us to be lights in this dark world so that others may know that, that, that of, of, of who you are and that you're soon to return. Thank you, Lord, for, for the promises you've given us. These things we ask you in the holy name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you all will have a wonderful Sabbath, and may God bless you all.